Hello friends of Oak Hills, this is Pastor Dale coming to you for our weekly video touch point. Today is Thursday, October 6, 2022. For our points to ponder article, we're coming back to the big story of the Bible. We are on chapter 5 of 12 chapters, and this chapter is called Kingdom. In chapter 4 of the big story of the Bible, God formed the nation of Israel by rescuing them out of Egypt, entering into a covenant with them at Sinai, and then establishing them in the promised land under Joshua's leadership. It is from this nation that the promised seed of the woman would come. In this next chapter of the big story, we see this nation reject God again. But God works this rejection into the story of the promised one to come. Chapter 5 is called Kingdom, and it covers the biblical books of First and Second Samuel, First Chronicles, and the poetry books of Psalms through Song of Solomon, the writings of David and Solomon. In 1 Samuel 8, 6, the people of Israel tell Samuel the prophet, Give us a king to judge us. God explains to Samuel, They have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. I stated last week that Israel in the Old Testament serves as a mirror for us, revealing how the human heart tends to drift away from God. In rejecting God as king, Israel shows us our tendency to resist the rule of God in our life. Since the fall in the Garden of Eden, humans look for ways to avoid God. We desperately need the seed of the woman to crush the head of the serpent and rescue us from our own sinful inclination to rebel. At first, God gives the people what they want. Israel gets Saul as king. He is taller and stronger than other men. He is a powerful military leader and very decisive. But just like Israel, Saul ignores God and takes matters into his own hands. Samuel pronounces to Saul in 1 Samuel 15, 23, Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Did God make a mistake in appointing Saul as king? Not at all. One of the things that we learn from the big story of the Bible is that God allows evil and sin and even trying circumstances in this world in order that the glory of the goodness of his redemption and deliverance is made all the more magnificent. God uses even the rejection of Israel and Saul to draw attention to the king of his own choosing. Fleshing out more details about the promised seed of the woman, God reveals that he has planned that this promised one would be a benevolent king who lays down his life for his sheep. David is a foreshadow of the coming deliverer king. He was a man after God's own heart. To David, God makes the promise, I will raise up your offspring after you, and I will establish his kingdom. Your throne shall be established forever. Once again, God narrows the family line of the promised one, First, he was the seed of the woman, Eve. Then, he was the offspring of Abraham, and then Isaac, and then Jacob. At the end of Genesis, Judah is set apart as the forefather of the promised one in Genesis 49.10. Now, the promised one will be a descendant of David. Jesus is the promised king. His first recorded words in the Gospel of Matthew are, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel invites us not only to receive the cleansing forgiveness of Christ's blood and sacrifice, but also the benevolent rule of Christ's kingship. This is the blessing for God's people. David not only is a foreshadow of the promised king, but he also demonstrates submission to the promised king. Like you and me, David drifted from the faithfulness of God, from faithfulness to God, and sought blessing and fulfillment apart from God when he committed adultery with Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11. After being convicted of his sin in 2 Samuel 12, David pens one of the most beautiful repentant psalms in Psalm 51. He acknowledges his sin and appeals to the mercy of God. Psalm 51, as a confession of sin, is a declaration of submission to God as king. 
David submits to God's righteousness, his truth, and his mercy. Psalm 51 demonstrates for us how we come to submit to our king against whom we have rebelled. A couple of highlights to touch on here for the Life of Oak Hills in this month of October. First of all, we have a new missionary of the month for this month, and it is the Jensen family. Ben and Julie Jensen serve in Nagoya, Japan with Mission to the World. They are on, they are on a church planning team, and their specific ministry is focused on college campus and college students. They were able to return after a very long furlough because of the, the pandemic this last spring, and they've been reestablishing themselves in the life of the church and in the ministry to uh, college students. So pray for the Jensen's, pray for the God's blessing on their outreach and their efforts to minister effectively there, to share the hope of Christ, that God would begin to draw more and more to their movement and, and have that church established there. The big event here in the life of Oak Hills is our annual harvest party coming up on Saturday, October 29th. And I ask you to, to do two things. First of all, just plan to be there. We would love to have our whole church family together. It's a, a rich night of fellowship and enjoyment and a relationship building, and which is significant for our church body. So plan to be there Saturday evening, October 29th. But then secondly, if you are able to contribute to making this a, a special event, we're looking for our families to provide trunks for our trunk or treat. And we're looking for our families to provide a pot of chili to help feed the, the crew. And so we'd love if you could contribute in one way or another to, to this event. It would be great. And then I guess thirdly, I don't know if I, did I say two ways. I'm going to say three ways. Um, invite people to join us. Uh, this is one of those events in the life of Oak Hills where it's fun to have friends and neighbors and co-workers to come and join and be a part of what's happening at the church and gives us the opportunity to build those relationships and extend further invitations to be a part of our church to come to worship. So October 29th, if you have any questions or you want to serve or volunteer or be part of that, Pastor John is our, our point person. So contact John directly and be involved with that. Right before that, on Monday, October 24th, we're having a, a men's gathering at Stu Terry's home. These gatherings are, are special events and special gatherings where the men of the church enjoy a rich meal together and fellowship and, it, and it really seek to sharpen and encourage one another in our walk with Christ. So love for you to be a part of that and plan to, to join us RSVP to Stu and watch for more details. And last but not least, just want to highlight that this coming Sunday, October 9th, we'll we will have our last sermon on the book of Daniel. So we're looking at Daniel chapter 12, and uh, this prophet and the prophecy of Daniel closes on some beautiful, hopeful messages, looking ahead to the final resurrection and really the redemption of God's people. There's been some very dark moments in, the, in this prophecy of Daniel, looking at the persecution of God's people and the the enemy that we face and endure, a spiritual enemy and Satan, who will raise up one who is to be the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. It is great encouragement to know that the final chapter has already been written and that there is victory for the people of God in Christ. And so that's what we're going to be reflecting on this Sunday. It's going to be a hope-filled, encouraging sermon as we wrap up our study of the book of Daniel. I hope you're able to join us this week. Well, thanks for joining me today for our Touchpoint, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.